Hello and welcome to another lecture in Introduction to Programming with C++. This video and the next few are going to be sort of an epilogue series in programming, uh, sort of an introduction to the C++ programming language and some of the more specific things that you can do in it as a review from previous videos. So to start with, we're going to look at some of the more C++ things you can do with classes. So I've gone ahead and opened up the project files from the classes and objects video. So that's the ball.cpp, ball.h, and main.cpp. Uh, I've taken out some of the things from the main function just to bring it down to the just the class things. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is the concept of a constructor. Now in the main.cpp, you can see here I had to say uh, cl b class.x equals 10. So I had to initialize one of the variables myself in the main function. Now there's a way to not do that, or there's a way to make that more automatic, and that's by the concept of a constructor. Now these function or these variables here are not defined naturally. They're not or they're not defined automatically when you create the class. So the way around that, or the way to solve that rather, is to buy, is to create something called a constructor. So the first constructor you generally want to create is the default constructor. Now a constructor is a method call, that uses that is called the same name as the class. So this is the default constructor. So it takes no arguments and you'll note it doesn't return anything. Now the job of the default constructor is essentially to just initialize everything to zero, to make everything all the same. So to create the actual code for the default constructor, it's a little different than other functions. You don't actually have to give it a return variable. So I don't have to type void or int. I can just say ball, ball, and then the function. Now the thing about this is I'm going to set x to 0, y to be 0, uh, vel x to be 0, and vel y to be 0. Then I'm going to compile. Okay. So that's how you create the default constructor. And again, the default constructor's job is just to set everything to 0. Now you can create other constructors by overloading the default constructor. So I can take I can create another function, ball, which create or which takes two arguments, uh, float x and float y, which are going to initialize these variables. So ball, ball, and this time float x and float y. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because we have two variables already called x and y and the way we'd initialize that is or the way we'd read in those variables is by creating a statement which looks like that it's not a statement that makes any sense of course x equals x but the question is which x are we talking about now that was easily solved in this function or in this constructor because there's only one x so there's only one x we could be referring to and it's the member of the ball class so the way you solve that, the way you say that this x belongs to the class and this x belongs to the local function is by saying this and then you create an arrow which is a hyphen and then the greater than symbol. Now this is going to come back later in pointers. So just hold on for now about what this is. This is magic. But this, the this keyword, is an interesting one. What this does is it signifies that this, and then the variable it points to, is part of this class. It's part of the overarching class that you are referencing. It's a member of ball. So anything that doesn't have this next to it is part of the local function. So you can do the same thing for this y equals y. And then I'm going to say vel x equals 0 and vel y equals 0. So that is how you create constructors. Now it's always a good idea to initialize every variable you have in the constructor to make sure that everything's initialized and there's nothing left to the random system. The way you, uh, let me compile this first, make sure everything's clean, okay. Now the way you 
call the constructor is like this. You treat the variable as a function. Now the way you call the constructor is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to say ball b underscore class equals ball and then you treat ball like a function. So this creates the initial this creates the initial um, this creates the initial object and then it can calls the constructor and then it copies everything from that to this. So now if I were to say well actually if I comment this out and I ask it to output the x and y variables for the object we have and run that you can see it creates 0 0 now we can use the other constructor we created so I can input the first two arguments for the x and y run that and you can see that it fills in the x and y parameters accordingly so that is what the constructor does it initializes well the first thing is the default constructor it initializes or it should that's how you should write it it initializes all of the variables to zero or to some base default value then you can overload that default constructor to other constructors to accept input arguments to modify specific variables so I can do this in such a way that it initializes various variables for the ball class and this is very useful because it means that whenever you're going back to this code you don't have to dig through all of the variables for a specific class to set them individually you can just have one constructor which you already have defined which fills in everything appropriately so it simplifies things and helps to further modularize and black box your code all right, so the other thing you can do with classes in C++ is this concept of inheritance. Basically, what that means you can do is you can create one class and then derive other classes from it. Or, to put it another way, you can write cl one class that has a bunch of functions which you might want to access in a similar way from another f class, but you don't want to have to rewrite all that function again. So, essentially what this is, is laziness in programming but it's laziness for a good reason because it helps to again simplify and modularize code so it's good laziness so what I've done is I've added a couple files here to the project I've added rectangle.cpp and rectangle.h so rectangle is a programmatic representation of a rectangle so you can set the width the height you can get the width you can get the height and you can calculate the perimeter and the area of this shape now, I haven't created a constructor. This is just going to be a relatively simple and straightforward class. But I have added a couple functions which you should definitely have in your code. These are called modifiers. Basically, you don't want to have variables which are accessible publicly to the rest of code. So you, the way you do it is you set up modifiers and accessors or getters and setters so these set variables which can't be accessed from outside the function namely or the class namely these variables and you have accessors which can get the values of those variables which can't be accessed from outside the class so getters or setters and getters ac uh, modifiers and accessors now there's this new thing down here it's not public and it's not private it's protected it's somewhat in the middle it protected variables still can't be accessed by things external to the class so like private but they can be accessible or they can be shared by derived classes as you'll see unlike private variables which cannot be or accessed by private or um, derived classes so when we create our derived class you'll see that I don't have to recreate the variables width and height because they're shared via this protected keyword 
Now I've also got rectangles.cpp, which I've included the rectangle.h header file. And then I've got all the functions set up here, fairly straightforward. These two are the ones to pay attention to. So get area and get perimeter, which are the width and height calculations necessary to get the perimeter and area. So if I run this code, you can see I've set the height and the width of this rectangle to be 10 and 3 respectively. And then I output the width, the height, the area, and the perimeter. So it's a width and height 3 and 10, uh, area of 30, and a perimeter of 26. Nice and straightforward. So now, I also have a couple files added, square.h and square.cpp. These are going to be the derived classes. I'm using the relationship here that all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So to start, I'm going to define the class square. Well, actually, I have to include rectangle.h. Now, class square. To show that it derives from rectangle, I say public, public, there we go, I can spell public, rectangle. So what this does is by having this colon here, it inherits from this public class rectangle. And now, basically, I don't have to rewrite the methods set width, set height, get width, get height. They're all inherited from this rectangle class. But I am free to modify any of the functions I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the functions get area and get perimeter. So I'm going to add my own functions get uh, int get area. and int get perimeter. There we are. Now when I define them, again, uh, this time I'm going to include square.h. So now I'm going to say int, uh, int square, the class it belongs to, get area, and I'm going to return width times width. And then int square get perimeter. Return uh, four times width. So I can still access oh, need a semicolon there. So I can still access this functions set width, set height, get width, get height, because they're under public, which means that they are shared to all classes and all code. But I'm also able, because I'm a the, because square is a derived class, to access the protected variables width and height. So I don't have to rewrite all of this code. I only have to rewrite the select code that I want to change for this specific class, namely get area and get perimeter. Now I'm going to include square.h, compile this, and it's going to give me a compiler. The reason for this is when I include square.h, square.h in already includes rectangle.h, but I'm already included rectangle.h. So it tries to define class rectangle once, and then when I include square.h and it goes to define or when it goes to include rectangle.h, it again redefines rectang the rectangle class. So there are two ways you can get around this. First way is you can just delete this. That'll make the problem go away. But that's bad because this requires you to maintain absolute knowledge of your include hierarchy, which is going to become difficult if you write larger and larger bits of code. So the simple way, or perhaps the not so simple way around this is to declare something like this. So what I'm going to say is if ndef this is called a preprocessor this is run before the this is run as the code compiles 
if end f if not defined and then I'm going to create a pound f which you'll see in a second if not defined rectangle and I'm just going to create a name rectangle h I'm going to define rectangle h and then I'm going to put an end if down here so what this is saying is if this thing here if this header isn't defined I'm going to go ahead and define it again this is just a name I can call this whatever I want and then it will set this up so it's only if this isn't defined and the only way this would be defined is if I call or if I include rectangle.h if it's already defined it won't run this a second time I can do the same thing in square.h this should encapsulate all of the code if and def square h define square h and if so this makes sure that the this include file is only included once so now if I run this it clears up that error and I'm going to now create a square this Q and I'm going to use the same functions I used for rectangle square dot set width which I'm going to set to 3 then I'm just gonna copy this and modify it so I didn't have to rewrite the code for square to set width or square to get width but because it's inherited from the rectangle class I don't have to rewrite it so this time I can see that the width of the square is 3 its area is 9 and its perimeter is 12 so that's the basics of C++ inheritance uh, I do suggest that you try this out for yourself like all the other code uh, try writing some other classes with some perhaps looser defined or some more general base classes so maybe create a base class called shape and then create other subclasses or other drive classes from it triangle square rectangle etc to better understand how derivation and inheritance work in C++ so that is it for this video and I'll see you all in the next lesson